All right, so I'm gonna do somewhat of a rant here, a rant recording for YouTube because um, Super Akuma, that's the French uh, Akuma player you see here. I'm holding my hand on his lap here and it feels good. Um, amazing player, needs no introduction. I'm sure you know who he is. Uh, just probably the guy who really put Akuma on the map. Uh, these days, we all like to talk about Avais Hani, you know, and the Pakistanis who are, yeah, the new gods, basically. But this is the guy who really put Akuma on the competitive map and got everyone's attention on Akuma in the community. And I'm a little bit annoyed. So he did well. This was played yesterday, I think, in Greece. The Tekken World Tour Challenger in Greece. Super Akuma won it. Sorry for spoiling it. I haven't even watched it myself. I know he beat Yon Ding in the Grand Finals. But what I did see was going on Twitter this morning and I saw... Uh, Su Akuma wanker, Akuma wanker, Super Akuma wins because he plays Akuma, fucking wanker. And it's like, I think I've seen that sort of shit now ever since this guy won the mix-up in La France. Uh, I don't remember when that was. Was it half a year ago? Uh, I, I don't remember. Um, a lot of people hate Akuma these days. A character that really has seen almost no use whatsoever is <laughs> suddenly universally hated by all of the... Well, not all of the community, but pretty solid chunks of it. And I find the whole thing so laughable. A lot of people saying how he's... Uh, Overpowered a lot of top players now putting him in like the what top one top two top three and The funniest thing is that Akuma was released with um, Tekken 7 FR uh, During the summer of 2016 So guys like Ni, you know and Nobi and all of your you know uh, established uh, Tekken uh, connoisseurs, you know the legends They've had access to Akuma for, what is it now, is it three years? But of course, when he was released, he was a little bit different. They nerfed him for the console release, uh, or well, uh, he was nerfed before he was released on console. Uh, the, the original Akuma, the original version of him, he could do crazy combos without meter. He would just kill you. So what they did, and, and then everyone said, oh, he's overpowered. Akuma is too crazy, no meter, he kills you. So then Bandai Namco nerfed him prior to the console release. And do you know what everyone said about Akuma? He's dead! Unplayable! Useless! No damage! Just a crap character. Crap fundamental tools, combos are too hard, and the combos are... They're so situational, there's no consistency to the character. He has no good tools. He can't compete. All he had was the damage, and now that's gone. He's garbage. Everyone said that. And everyone dropped Akuma. How many people did you see play Akuma in Season 1? Punko dabbled a bit and then went back to Street Fighter. And then no one played the character. And every top player put Akuma at mid-tier. Everyone. Geese was determined to be 50 times better than Akuma, pretty much by everyone. And then slowly, slowly, uh, Super Akuma starts doing well with, with the character, and he's doing the combos consistently. And now people are saying, the damage is broken. Not a good character, but man, when he gets a launch, the damage is broken. And then, we've gone from that... To people then saying that, no, Season 2 Akuma is actually OP. He should be nerfed. Down 1 2 counter at panic move is too stupid. Down 2 into uh, Hadouken. Dumb. Why can't he launch me from a 10 frame jab? And I I'm sorry, but how is it that suddenly all of these amazing players who said the character was bad are suddenly saying he's overpowered? So why, why did everyone have an opinion on Akuma then? If no one played him, if no one had even tried to do all of the combos Super Akuma did. 
No one had even fucking bothered to try with the character, but everyone felt they could just brush him off like a fucking piece of garbage. I just find it so comical, and it's so pathetic now, in my opinion, how it seems like everyone's, everyone dabbles with Akuma now. Geese has been nerfed, so Shikurin has dropped Geese, and is now playing Akuma instead. Ni seems to be favoring Akuma. Arslan is dropping Geese and is playing Akuma. Asim is playing Akuma. A, a lot of people now have just picked up Akuma because he's the flavor of the day. We all said he was garbage. He's shit. Then one guy shows up after being out there for two and a half years. They've had access to the character. The best players in the world have access to this character for two and a half years. And they go from saying he's shit to then one guy does well, a guy from Le Paris does well, and they're like, oh, he's OP. I mean, what? Well, I, I, I'm just astounded at the community, to be honest. And I'm not, I'm saying I probably made the same mistake, but... <laughs> Isn't it a little bit laughable? Am I the only one who finds it so funny? No one even bothers to learn how to play with Akuma. Everyone just says he sucks. And then one guy from Paris, or, or France, whatever, actually bothers to do the work. And then everyone's like, oh, he's overpowered. Why, why, why did no one bother to try before? Did you see the Israeli Akuma who won against Trungi and so now, the Olympians? So now everyone's saying he's OP and everyone wants to play Akuma. But why would you say the character is OP now when five minutes ago you had no fucking clue at all as to how to deal with the character or his tier placing? What makes you feel suddenly, oh, Eureka, Akuma is OP, he's the best, we should all play Akuma. Do you know what I think is gonna happen? It's gonna become oversaturated, everyone plays Akuma, and then people start figuring out the matchup, and it's probably gonna go back to Akuma is strong, but he's not OP. That's what I... It's, it's quite gimmicky. I think that's what's going to happen. I just think, due to no one fucking playing the character for three fucking years, I think everyone's just probably so trash at the ma matchup. And I'm just gonna quote Mr. Jopelix from Finland, um, who is an expert, I would say, at the Akuma matchup. He's played... Um, against the Super Akuma here, five times in tournament, uh, last time at EVO, not a single time has Super Akuma been able to beat Jopelix, because Jopelix knows exactly how to deal with Akuma. The Demon Flip, the Tatsu, the Cross-Ups, you fucking name it, he knows how to space that shit. And he told me, Everyone's sleeping on the matchup. I even look at the Koreans play as I, I'm quoting you Jopelix now I hope it's okay. Hopefully I get everything correct, but ask Jopelix about it um, But he just told me everyone's sleeping on the matchup even the Koreans don't know because no one's good at Akuma in Korea So I, I, I just take it with a pinch of salt when a character's out for three years and then suddenly everyone says he's OP because one guy does well and Abai Sani does well. And then he, it's like he's suddenly discovered and now everyone's gonna learn how to deal with him, I think, the way Jopelix has. Um, but of course, on paper, Akuma has some crazy shit, like a 10 frame launcher with one bar, uh, he has a down 1-2 counter hit that was removed for geese, you know, the dick jab panic tool. Akuma still has that. He has a duck, ducking 2 that goes into Hado, that's 12 frames. Uh, he has some nasty shit, but it's not like the character doesn't have shortcomings. Pretty goddamn average fundamental tools, like his counter hit launchers, his punishment. No, sorry, his punishment is great, but what I'm talking about is um, uh, long-range punishment and... Uh, you know, very, very solid keep-out tools. Now, what the fuck am I talking about? 
it's it's uh, the easiest is to talk about geese uh, but now I'm I'm this is a diversion but that's what used to be interesting with geese and Akuma in season two is that geese had the fundamental tools where he was very strong without meter and of course strong with meter but Akuma had the damage and the weak fundamental tools uh, but now they've made it so that geese is basically uh, a low-grade version of Akuma, uh, in my opinion, in Season 3. Geese lost the fundamental approach, and now, just like Akuma, he becomes more of a defensive character, character that's looking for that one hit to kill them. So, yeah, uh, he lost some of his contrast to Akuma. But, um... No, I, I, I just find the whole thing so, so comical, and it's gonna be so, it's gonna be so annoying for Super Akuma, who's been with this, this character for so long. He played this character back in the day, you know, where people said he's, it's not a competitive character, and now suddenly everyone changes when they've discovered the character. But what is going to happen when everyone has figured out the matchup? That is bound to happen now where everyone's playing the character. Um, so yes, Akuma is a strong character, but I don't think he's an overpowered, easy mode, piece of shit, garbage character that ruins Tekken. Not at all. And Akuma is so unique. Uh, people actually say it's a flaw that he plays like in Street Fighter. He should play more like Tekken, people say. Yeah, I also find the jumping annoying, but he's so unique. The fact that he brings the Street Fighter system is what makes it so interesting, and it stands out so much. Um, yeah, I said it from day one from seeing his trailer, like, huge credit to the developers of Tekken. You know, they really captured the essence of the Street Fighter style. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to rant a little bit on this. I, I just... Just the whole thing p pisses me off so much. Uh, and the, t the tear whoring is just disgusting. I, 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 ca I just can't even... I can't defend anyone's tear whoring. Thank God for JDCR. It brings us obscure characters like Heihachi and Armor King. No matter what, he brings us those characters. And Dragonov. But then you have guys like me. Oh, what's the best character? Oh, I I'm gonna play Akuma. And, you know, insert... I mean, even Shikurin drops Geese. Who was so synonymous with Geese. It's... <laughs> As this game becomes Street Fighter... I know in Street Fighter all the pros basically go with the top tiers. You know, even Daigo. Well, I mean, maybe Daigo's always done that shit. But it's, it, it, to me, it's just so... It's so boring. And now it feels like Tekken is becoming that game where suddenly, in prior seasons, people would play the characters they enjoyed, but now I feel like more and more players are just, what's the flavor of the day? Or the flavor of the month? I'll play that character. You know, who's the top tier now? Oh, it used to be Steve and Geese. You see them all over the place. And now it's gonna be, now it's Akuma. In this tournament, there were a lot of Akumas. There's gonna be a lot of Akumas now. It's so sad. Oh, I'm, uh, he's probably sitting there thinking, how am I gonna beat Arslan Ash? And he tries Devil Jin, he tries Steve, he tries, uh, well, in insert all of the classic characters. He tried Kazumi. Well, he tried Kazuya as well. But now he tries Akuma. And what did Mr. Naps do? Jimmy. Who's been a character loyalist since what? Tekken 5 with Brian? He was the only guy to fucking beat Arslan Ash at a tournament. Took a fight on him. At least I think he was the only one. I love you the fact that you're actually defending Akuma from the other guys. Sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you here, but so maybe, maybe, baby, you could just do what Naps does and make it work. Just work hard and overcome the obstacles your character has and do something interesting and new with your character. He took down Arslan Ash. He just, okay, Arslan relies on Jab and Dabford when? How do I counter this with Brian? Rather than just going, oh, what's the top tier that's gonna work here? Oh, I'm gonna go with this one. This... You know, thank God for people like uh, JDCR and... Uh, 
<laughs> nah, so John Ding who plays Eddie, you know. It, it's hard to claim that Eddie's ever been very strong in Tekken 7, but look at him go, you know. Uh, so again, I just want to stress, where everyone now feels like, oh, I gotta play uh, Akuma. All of these top players picking up Akuma suddenly because he's the flavor of the day. Look at Naps. None of those guys can beat Arslan, but Naps made it work with Brian. Season 2 Brian. A character a lot of people just write off immediately when it comes to competitive play. Because he's so limited in punishment and poking. But Naps makes it work against Kazumi. And same thing with fucking Kazumi. Oh, season 1, she's so strong. Season 2, ah, oh, forget about Kazumi, she's dead. How many top players didn't say that? And then uh, fucking Arslan comes there and beasts, beasts everyone with Kazumi. And what do you see the next day after Evo Japan? Nii's playing Kazumi. Kokoma is playing Kazumi. Everyone's playing Kazumi suddenly. I don't know, it's, it's, I, I just find it so disappointing. The character tier whoring and the giving, you know, super certain reviews on characters, you know, and all these tier lists. When you can just say, I ain't got no fucking clue. Akuma's been out for two and a half years, and you, you know what, guys? I'm a top player, I'd like to do a review on Akuma, but you know what? I don't fucking play the character. No one I know plays the goddamn character. We don't know what he can do. Because no one no one bothers with him. But no, three fucking years later, some French guy does well with the character and overpower. Maybe you should wait to say overpowered until you discover Akuma, which is happening now. And then maybe in six months we can give a verdict. Now that everyone's gonna spam Akuma. What happens when we learn to deal with the matchup? As Joe Felix and a couple of other players have done. So, I'm not saying Akuma isn't strong. He is incredibly strong. The combo damage is huge and the tools I listed. But I feel like everyone's jumping the gun so much. And... Frankly, the tier whoring is pathetic. I would like it if we had more character loyalists. More and more people are doing the knee approach. Like, just pick the most reliable tournament character. Who is considered to be the best character? I'll go with that. Go with that. Go with that. It's starting to look like Street Fighter tournaments. Where just a few characters are just all over the place. Uh... So yeah, I guess that's the rant. Uh, that, that, that was everything I wanted to say. Uh, I, I just find it to be a pretty... Pretty crap situation, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> voice break. And... Uh, yeah, Super Akuma deserves a lot of respect. He doesn't deserve fucking flack for everything he's done. You, you can shit on the people who are jumping on the bandwagon now, but this guy played him when everyone said that you could write off Akuma. You can't compete with Akuma. So, yeah, but give, give him some respect.